You are tuned in to Tom Foolery. Uh, when there were all the asylum seekers coming from the Middle East, I thought they're not being outrageous here. Uh, Trump wants to make sure that there aren't any terrorists coming in, and he's not accusing those all of them of being terrorists. But he wants to make sure that there aren't terrorists sneaking in with them, and uh, you know, just be safe. And it is a part of the law that um, all asylum seekers have to go through, uh, you know, vigorous background checks and things like that to make sure that. Um, that they don't have criminal backgrounds and things like that. Um, even if you're a convicted felon in your country, yet you really are someone who's being oppressed by, because uh, the law says you have to be oppressed by your race or religion or other sorts of God-given freedoms that um, that they would call oppression. And so even if you are really being oppressed, you're not, uh, you're not automatically going to get in just because of that alone. You have to actually, you, you have to be a good citizen ahead of time. And so when they had this halt at the airports, pretty much telling everybody like, look, we're not letting y'all in. There's too many of you. We have to check and make sure that none of you have criminal backgrounds or are terrorists or are in any other sort of organizations that we would, uh, that we would not want in the United States. I didn't think that was all that ridiculous. And as somebody who's suck, you know, who, who got asylum from the United States, I would think that you would also appreciate that system and the way that it works. No. Um, I absolutely agree with uh, vetting people when they're applying for asylum. I think that's necessary. And I don't think it's outrageous to, you know, have a standard for people to come here. Um, what I think the issue with asylum is, is um, how long it takes to do the process. It is underfunded and there's not as many people working. However, all the applications are still coming in. So you have people that are applying. And for example, we applied in December of 2000 and it didn't get approved until 2005. So and that's, you know, it, and that was nonstop going to um, give information, speak in front of judges, um, get interviews, get questioned, and it still took years to do it. I'm sorry, not 2005, 2009, I apologize. Okay. So, um, that's nine years of, of going back and forth and having to pay a pretty ridiculous amount of money. Um, because since it takes so long, you have to get a work permit and you have to pay for the work permit. You have to pay for the lawyers, you have to pay for the process, and it's not cheap. And if you're already in a terrible situation um, where you're fleeing a country, you probably don't usually have the means to do it. But in the meantime, are, are you an only child? No, I have an older brother. Okay, so in the meantime, you and your brother are going to school and uh, are already living in America and say that the process derails, doesn't work out. Most of these people, as far as I understand it, they're not turning around and, and putting them on a plane and chasing them right back out the country. They're just kind of forgetting about them and, and they're, they're just kind of floating around now uh, without really being uh, tracked or anything. Yeah, you're just kind of stuck in limbo. It's like, yes, you are here and have documentation, but you are not considered a resident. So you're... Or a legal resident, permanent resident. Mm -hmm. But you're still paying taxes. You're yes. still going to school. You're still getting health care and getting a driver's license and these other things in the meantime. You can get a driver's license. You can't get any benefits. And I think that's a... A uh, big misconception that people have is that um, I've heard that people make claims that undocumented immigrants have all these benefits, but even if you are documented, you do not get benefits. As a child, yes, you get to go to school and you can get like vaccines and just, you know, stuff like that because it's going to affect other kids, but you can't get any type of um, benefits like, you know, welfare or food stamps or anything like that. But you're, you go to the hospital, you have 
you know, an ID and things, you can be treated and uh, taken care of. See, the thing with all of the people who actually came over here from the Middle East, the issue, the real issue with it is that it was just such a huge amount of people coming all at once that, yes, maybe the process does take too long. But even with that said, it's a process that takes a long time. And you have so many people coming in at once. I mean, I don't want to put any numbers out there because I really have no clue. But I, you saw the pictures of people just standing at airports and all, all over the place, port, uh, points of entry, just waiting to get in by the hundreds all over the nation. And really, as far as I understand it, the UN actually for their um, for the laws for asylum is that they you're supposed to go to the nearest country uh or, or the near the nearest country that will um that allows asylum seekers and for people to somehow end up all the way from the middle east all the way over in the west seems like they skipped a couple in the meantime <laughs> i actually have i had no idea about that um but i would also think that you, if you're fleeing to let's say uh, to a different country, maybe you don't want to go to a country with the same type of um, old regulations that the country you're fleeing has. Like uh, if you're a woman in a Middle Eastern country that has uh, tough laws on women, I would doubt you would want to stay somewhere in another Middle Eastern country that is a Muslim country um, having to go through the same thing. So, Yeah, okay. So there's, so it, you know, after all of that uh, debacle and there's still people from the Middle East trying to get in, now we have what's a, uh, a crisis in, uh, you know, coming from uh, Mexico and Guatemala and all of these other countries of caravans of people uh, in packs just walking over here to to come into the united states and trump would like funding to build a wall in the meantime i understand if people say i don't want um i think that i think that the better option is to change laws and make it easier for people to become citizens i understand that but i don't understand how specifically just the wall you can be against that. Not, uh, we're not talking about saying we're no longer letting anybody in at all. We're just saying we want them going to ports of entry. We want them coming in as documented uh, immigrants instead of just sneaking over the border and uh, coming in undocumented. And I don't understand how that can be a problem. I really don't. Okay. I think what it comes down to is something, what's going to be more effective. So you have the majority of um, undocumented immigrants aren't people that are coming across the border, like hopping the border. Um, it's people that are coming here legally with visas and overstaying their visas. So yeah. if we really want to address the problem of undocumented immigrants, we need to reform law and change the way that people, the pathways to citizenship, because people say they dislike undocumented immigration, but yet they're making the pathways to citizenship harder. You take things like DACA, even though, you know, it could be a pathway to citizenship, but um, you change TPS laws, you change certain asylum laws. Uh, so I think we need to reform the immigration laws we have, and that's what's going to be more effective. Um, as, go ahead. Again, I don't disagree with that. I don't have any issue with reforming the laws, but a wall, just a wall, that's all we're talking about. Say, say we can say, let's build a wall, but we also need to worry about reforming the uh, immigration laws. I, I don't, you know, that's fine. But right now we're talking about an actual budget. And I don't think as far as the budget goes, we need a any more money to reform the law we need more money, or maybe we need more more people to process papers and, and you know uh, man courts and things like that. Fine, but a wall specifically. Why don't we want a wall? 
I would ask specifically what your point would be for getting a wall. What do you think it's going to accomplish? To stop people from coming in uh, outside of points of entry. I understand that you're saying that a bigger issue is uh, people overstaying their visas. But, we're, you know, yes, we're not trying – no one is saying this is going to fix the whole problem. Right here, right now, we're just going to build a wall and it's all done. You know, everything's everything's golden. No one is saying that. I, I as, as crazy as Trump is, I have not even heard him say anything so outrageous as this will fix everything. He wants to build a wall. And even more so, I think it's even a, a better point to, to show that all of the people who voted for Trump were obviously in favor of a wall. That was his platform. Like that was his main stance while campaigning was that he was going to build a wall. And so if you can see, all right, all, it was like with Obama. All these people obviously wanted uh, health care. Uh, or free health care uh, for the United States, and that was what Obama ran on. And so when he gets in the office, it makes sense to pass some form of this and then maybe reform it later. But since that's what Americans voted for, we should let that uh, in of some sort, of some form, some way, eventually let that in because that is what Americans vote for, voted for when they voted for Obama. I think the same thing with Trump. People voted for that wall. America, like it or not, America voted for that wall. And they, they have the right to their votes. It's not – obviously, this is not a purely democratic um, country, but you, they did vote for this guy with that – intention in mind and i feel like just that alone should be enough to say all right let's go ahead and, and get this wall because apparently people think it's a good idea um the difference with obama is that he went through congress to get a law passed to do it um i don't think maybe holding the government eight hundred thousand people hostage is the way to go about it but um the majority in the polling, the majority of Americans do not agree with the law. Uh, mainly, they don't agree that the majority agree that it's not a priority, and there's still over 50% that think that this should never be done. So, um, again, I, I understand he talked about a wall nonstop. Um, he does talk about how it's going to stop criminals from coming in and drugs from coming in. Um, so I guess when I asked about what you think you want to accomplish with that wall, if it's, you know, drugs, uh, the majority of drugs come in through a legal port of entry. Uh, it does come in through the southern border, but it's through legal ports of entry. So, again, that you're not really addressing the problem. It's more of like a symbol at this point. So what would work is not just reforming immigration, but increasing uh, patrol, increasing manpower, and getting better technology. So if you're going to spend money, the, you can give Trump $5.7 billion for a wall. That's not going to build a good bit of it. Estimates are way higher than that. But um, So I think if we're going to spend money, a good bit of money, billions and billions of dollars, it should be on something that's going to actually address the problem, not just a small, small percentage of it. And if you have a wall, if you don't add the manpower, it's not going to do much good. Pe they just found all these tunnels. You see people getting over the wall. So it's not just strictly a wall because without the manpower to back it, it's not really going to do much good. I, yes, but we all know with uh, coyotes and people who do use these uh, other ways to get in to the country, it is dangerous. And these are criminals who are uh, helping them through there and lots of times do horrible things on the long road, uh, uh, smuggling them over. And, you know, women uh, get raped. People get killed, and more often than not, they just get robbed. They just say, hey, look, give me all this money. Give me, 
thousands and thousands of dollars and I will get you there. And then they get them out in the middle of the desert and, and leave them and just walk away to, to starve and uh, dehydrate and die of thirst. And more so, if you put up a well, it will at least slow them down. If somebody wants to just walk over versus trying to climb or dig through or dig under a wall, we're slowing them down. So where one person just driving up and down this wall, uh, as long as they can cover, you know, 10 miles uh, every couple hours, that's a lot easier, right? But what they are doing is they're using other military um, sections of government and bringing them in to help man the borders and to help deal with immigration and to help deal with uh, immigrants that are being seized. And that, that seems like it's still an issue. It's not a fix, but it is an issue that should be addressed in a wall doesn't doesn't fix everything but it it does address that issue and those issues so uh, a lot of people that cross over illegally through the border um do so because they can't cross legally mainly because if you my grandpa for example just applied he applied for a visa 15 years ago and he just got it approved so i was just now able to see him since you know since 2000 it was my first time seeing him so people skip all that because they know that either it will get denied because they don't approve everybody or it will take years upon years so they believe that the easier solution is to just get over here any way they can especially if you have if you are seeking asylum and you have some you know you can have gang members after you or it could be political like me political asylum um so and asylum laws tell you you can come here illegally and still apply for asylum because they understand that there is extenuating circumstances that could happen. So I think if we reform immigration, that would also take care of a good bit of that problem um, because people just don't even bother applying. I, I again, we're we're on the same page as far as reform goes and as far as it taking too long but i i can't agree that just because you have trouble getting in or you think it's taking too long that you should be able to just come over illegally undocumented and uh slip right into the country without uh any any issues whatsoever i we're we're on the same page for for most of this it's just once it gets to the wall i i'm not understanding how there can be uh i understand why you think there's other issues or more important issues i just don't understand why somebody could be against a wall specifically and you even said that most people think that the wall should never be built and I don't understand why. I don't understand, like, uh, I think it was Nancy Pelosi that, that a wall is immoral. What? Why? How is a wall immoral? It's just a wall. It will help. It is, it is something that can help. And other countries have seen it proven to be helpful. We're not saying that it fixes everything. It's not the end-all, be-all. But it helps. It, I mean, can you at least agree that it would help? That it would do something? Yes, I can agree that it would um, slow, slow people down because at the end of the day, they will get under or over. Um, my, my personal issue with it is that if we are going to spend billions of dollars, I'd rather spend it on something that it's, that's going to be useful and that's going to actually be more effective. Um, so that's it. I guess if we have billions of dollars to throw, you know, throw away, I guess I'd be okay with it. We don't. So I would rather do what's m most effective, what's going to help the majority of cases, as opposed to spending that much money on something that's going to going to only address a small percentage. And so money money makes sense. That's a that's a good fair point. Is that it is just really expensive. But if you say, hey, look, we want to start small, start somewhere where we can 
you know, just if we go reform things and make different laws for points of entry, yet people are not using those points of entry already, then it doesn't make sense to reform anything when we still have all these other people crossing over a border. Whereas we can build a wall and force people to these points of entry and then say, all right, now that they're all going there, now we can now we can reform these laws and make it easier. And I'm sure that your point is going to be, hey, if they reform the laws, everybody's going through these points of entry. Anyways, but the criminals are not. And we know the criminals are not, or not all criminals are, and we know that there will still be, no matter how loose we make these laws, until we just say, hey, everybody come over all willy-nilly, we're handing out social security cards, then people will still come over the border illegally. And uh, I, I think that one of the things that gets lost in this is that the people who are for a wall are somehow racist and even more so than anything you don't even have to be for a while you just say hey i'm a conservative i'm a republican i'm a christian you are probably going to be a nazi or a neo-nazi or you know some sort you know your your comparisons to hitler will be all over the place that i think is taking it way too far if you're just you're talking about, I mean, I, so far, and again, this is just me. I'm a white male. Apparently, that, uh, as of lately, does means that my opinion does not matter very much. So I think I got into the wrong hobby as far as starting a podcast goes. But that's what I have you here for. Why is, what is it that Trump says that makes him a racist? 